everyone, welcome to lesson 11.5, the last lesson of the short chapter. Chapter 11, almost gone. I will be able to choose an appropriate measure of central tendency. What do I mean by central tendency? Well, central tendency refers to our three M's, mean, median, and mode. And central tendency means we use those to kind of find what's in the center. All right, so sometimes it's more important to use the median or the mean or the mode. It gives us a better understanding of the data we're given. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. But basically, should you use the mean, median, or mode to best understand the set of numbers given? I think I'd already just said that. But that's good to note right there. So when should you use the mean? Well, you should use the mean... It's most appropriate when the data has no extreme values or no outliers. And we're going to talk more about outliers at the end. But these are all pretty tight here, 78, 79, 82. These are your test scores, 83, 83, 85, 88, 89. I would use the mean in this situation to find out what the average score was. Now, let's say that there's somebody who was missing class, and they weren't there for a while, and they scored a zero on that test. Now to find, if I'm still, I could still use the mean, but it's, it's probably more appropriate if I use the median in that situation probably, because this outlier, this zero, is really going to bring down my average. All right, so my, most of my class did a great job. There's just one student who really struggled. All right, so I'll work with that student, but that doesn't really show me how my class did overall. Now, if this is just my class right here, I'm going to use the mean because everybody's kind of grouped in the same area. There's no outliers. So when do you use the median? All right, the median is most appropriate when the data has extreme values, like we just talked about, having an outlier of some sort. All right, so these are my test scores. 12, 32, 68, 72, 75, 78, 79, 99, 100. I have a couple outliers, because most of my class were kind of in this zone right here in the middle. And I had two kids who just did a terrible job and two kids who did awesome on their test. All right, so those might actually balance each other out, but in this case, I would probably use the median because I have some outliers, some extremes there. So in this case, I would have had, let's see, how many numbers I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the fifth number would be my middle number, one, two, three, four, five. So 75 would be my median, and that makes a lot more sense than if I were to add them up and divide them by the amount of numbers I have because of those outliers. And you can probably guess when the best time is to use the mode. When the data has many repeated numbers, we might want to use the mode. If we had a lot of kids score a 78 on a test, yes, I had a 70, a 74, and an 84, and a 78, but most kids scored a 78. So I'm going to look at the data and say, okay, let's go with the mode. Kids were a 78 in that situation. All right. So mean, when there's no extreme values. Median, when there are outliers and extreme values. And you're going to use the mode when there's many repeated numbers. All right. So mean, median, and mode, or mode. What would you use here? So this is the Olympics. Let's say this is the U.S. team. How many medals they won, I'm not sure if it is. How many medals they won in 92, 96, the year 2000, 2004, and 2008. All right, so once again, I should always organize my data from least to greatest. So I have 97, I have 101, 103, 110, and 112. I have five numbers right there. Now. There's no real outliers because there's maybe if one year, let's say they only got like three medals, that wouldn't really be indicative of what the U.S. usually does. All right, that would have been an outlier year. That would have been a strange occurrence, but that's not the situation. So I think I would use the mean right here. I would find the average. All right, that should give me somewhere in the middle. Mean would be most appropriate here. There's no numbers repeated, so you wouldn't use the mode. And the median might work. It looks like 103. That would probably be about the same thing as your, um, as your mean. Your mean and median might be about the same number. So those, they might both work here. 
but mean would give you your average, and that's what I would like to go with there. All right, let's play another round of mean, median, or mode. Okay, so you could probably already tell before I order these least to greatest that a number pops up quite a bit. All right, I see 82, 82, 82. I see four 82s, 81 to 78, and 85. So more than half my numbers are 82. I'm not even going to list them out. I'm going to save you some time right now. I would use mode in this. The water temperature, all right, is typically about 82. That's the number that's kind of in the middle there. That's a central tendency I would use in this situation. Now, you can find the mean. You can find the median as well, but the mode would be most appropriate here. All right, so talking about those outliers, let's find the mean, median, or mode for the average lifespan of these animals. Now, it might be hard for you to see. All right, maybe I'll bring this in for a second so you can see it real quick. As you can see there, let me see what we have. Okay, an elephant lives for about 35 years. African elephant, bottlenose dolphin, 30. Chimpanzee, 50. Galapagos tortoise, 200 years lifespan. Wow. Gorilla, 30 years. Gray whale, 70. And a horse, 20. Okay. Place that back down right there. So, I definitely have an outlier here. Something that is extreme compared to the rest of the lifespans. You got it. It's the Galapagos tortoise living 200 years long. So, what would I use here? If you go back to the beginning, when we have outliers, we really want to stay away from, I'm sorry, we really want to stay away from the mean, all right, because that will really affect the average. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we definitely use the median here. First of all, let's order these from least to greatest. Here we go. We have the horse at 20. We have... The gorilla and bottlenose dolphin at 30 each. Okay, then we have a 35 with the African elephant. And so I've used my horse, my gorilla, my bottlenose dolphin, my African elephant. Then I have my chimpanzee at 50, my gray whale at 70, and 200. Good for that Galapagos tortoise. All right, so that 200 is really going to affect my average. Let's just find the median first. I have three numbers there, three numbers there, seven total. So the median age is 35. I mean, lifespan is 35. So that makes sense to me. But watch what happens when I do the mean. All right, the mode would have been 30. That's close, too. But the, um, let's do the median, mean right now. That's my median. So I'd have to add these all up. So I'm going to go vertical. I'm going to do 200, 70, 50, 35, 30, 30, and 20. Let's add these up real quick. All zeros, 7, 12, 15, 18, 21, plus 2 is 23, 430. All right? To find the mean, though, I had to divide by the numbers. I added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have to see how many times 7 goes 100 into 430. 7 goes into 43. It goes into 49 7 times, so 42 would be 6 times. And I get 42, 10. 7 goes into 10 once. And then I'm going to have some sort of decimal there. Let's, well, I guess I can finish it off here. And I get 3, annex of 0. 7 goes into 34 times. Let's just stop right there. So I have 61 and approximately 4 tenths lifespan. All right? So 61 and 4 tenths, that's including that Galapagos tortoise. So I'm going to write that up here. 61 and 4 tenths um, year lifespan. That's how long they are. About 61 years when I include that tortoise. That's a lot different than my median of 35 years or my mode of 30 years. That's why you could sort of see that the um, mean is not the best way to go. But what happens if I, so I'm going to erase all this right here. What happens if I take away that Galapagos turtle? Or, yeah, the tortoise, sorry. And I add it up now. So I get, oh, I think I had it wrong the first time. I forgot to add that five. Oopsies. 
but it'd still be about 61. All right, so I made a mistake there. But 0, 0, 5, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22, 23, I should remember that. So 235 this time divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we go. 6 goes into 23 three times. 3 times 6 is 18. I get 5. Bring down my 5. 6 goes into 50. Well, 6 goes into 48. Um, 8 times 54. 9 times. So minus that. I have the decimal. And so uh, it's going to be approximately 39 years. So when I take out the Galapagos tortoise, my mean is 39. When I include my Galapagos tortoise, I know I made a mistake over there, it's about 61. That's a huge difference. So that shows that this is definitely an outlier. You're going to want to use the median here, which was 35, and the mode was 30. All right, But I would use the middle number, the central tendency is going to be 35. All right, because that 61 is way too far away from most of the numbers. Most of the numbers in the 20, 30, 30, 35, 50, I see, and a 70. But that Galapagos tortoise is way out there. I mean, this gray whale is kind of an outlier as well. All right, down to your job now. You have two questions to do for me. Let me erase this for you first. Looking at these cooking temperatures for, I don't know, whatever I'm cooking. I don't really cook, so I don't know too much about this kind of stuff. But which temperature is an outlier? You can see that most of them are in the same area. One of them is an outlier. So which measure of central tendency, sorry, which measure of center best describes the data? Would you use mean, median, or mode? And don't stop right there, because there's also a word that says why. Why? So, once again... Which measure of tendency? So for number two, you can't just say mean, you can't just say median, or you can't just say mode. You have to tell me why you choose one of those. Now, you already know there's an outlier, so this should be pretty easy to cross out one of these at least. All right, good luck, and we'll see you soon.